Hi everyone. Before we get into this video, I feel it is prudent to issue a content warning. The book we are going to be discussing today is called Rage by Stephen King and it was pulled from print by Stephen King's own choice and let's just say for good reason. And I do not say that lightly given my strong feelings on censorship and book censorship specifically. This book is a very confronting book about a certain type of incident that, shall we say, rhymes with pool looting. And that is the first and last time I will sense that phrase in this video. I understand why this subject matter may be uncomfortable for some, and it's definitely one of the darkest books and topics that will be covered on this channel. So if you feel the need to click away and go watch something else, no hard feelings, that is completely understandable. I mean no disrespect to Stephen King or the victims of any real life incidents of this nature in this video. I am far from the first person who has covered this subject on YouTube. However, I feel that it is necessary to just make this warning to those who may find this confronting or dark or not to their tastes and sensibilities. Thank you. I just finished reading Rage, a novella by Stephen King originally published under the pen name of Richard Barkman and you cannot in fact buy this anymore. It was taken out of print by Stephen King himself and even in um, modern printings of the Barkman books, which is this collection of the books he wrote under his pen name, normally you cannot find Rage. It is not included anymore. This I bought at a second-hand bookshop. Stephen King himself took this book out of print and that is for good reason. I will briefly discuss what the book is about and then why it is taken out of print and how I feel about that given how strongly I am against censorship and book censorship. Because while I, it was taken out of print, I completely understand why and I 100% stand by Stephen King's decision and I believe it was the right decision both for him and for everybody in general. The reason I read it was because it is still part of Stephen King's bibliography and it is a part of this modern literary history, um, Stephen King's history and incidents like this are worth talking about as uh, a discussion to have, an important discussion, discussion to have concerning when books and media can inspire a real instance for better or for worse in this case, very much for the worse, and book censorship and when it is warranted perhaps. So this book centres around a student at a high school in America named Charlie Decker. Uh, this was published in the 1970s I believe by the way, so that there's a timing for context. And Charlie Decker has had a pretty troubled past and he's called to the office uh, to discuss an incident where he hit a teacher and got suspended and uh, after a confrontation with the principal he is expelled from the school and so he returns to his classroom on the way taking a pistol out of his locker and so when he returns to the classroom he shoots his teacher dead and holds the class hostage. The novel follows a very tense uh, a number of hours in the classroom where he toys with the students and with the teachers and the authorities trying to communicate with him, apprehend him, getting negotiating with him and he messes with the students holding court over them all forcing them to confess embarrassing and troubling stories about themselves and each other while also going into his own troubled, disturbed past, especially his abusive father and how that really screwed him up. And eventually the students actually decide, end up sort of playing along in a, a sort of a Stockholm Syndrome sort of situation. They sympathise with Charlie Decker, they 
are willingly share these stories just as he does his and they eventually turn on the one student who is opposed to him, Ted Jones. Things escalate over time until uh, eventually the whole class just descends on Ted Jones like a pack of deranged rabid animals and he ends up concussed and in hospital and in catatonic state afterwards and uh, Charlie Decker is eventually apprehended after he releases all of the students aside from Ted at 1 o'clock p.m. and he's eventually tried and found not guilty due to insanity and placed in a mental hospital. So that is a summary of the plot of this book. I have no need to do a spoiler warning because well th that's not the sort of video this is. This isn't really a review, this is a discussion video on this book and the discussion to be had surrounding it. Uh, before we go further, I, I feel need to say I am obviously not in America. I am in, live in Australia and we have extremely strict gun laws in Australia. It has been decades since we've had any sort of incident resembling this here. Uh, conversely, every year, every few months, even, even here, we hear about similar incidents like this occurring in America and I cannot even fathom what it must be like to be in that kind of situation. I would, I honestly cannot even imagine visiting America, no offence to any Americans watching this, but just the fact that the gun laws there are just so lax that these kind of incidents are able to happen as regularly as they do is just terrifying to me. So I cannot imagine being in this situation or hearing about this on such a regular basis as they must do there. I believe Stephen King was a teenager when he wrote the first draft of this but then he was an adult when it was reworked and published under the pseudonym Richard Barkman. This was the first book published under that name and uh, as I understand it the reason he took a pen name it wasn't anything to do with the content of the book or the books that he published under it. It was simply because he was churning out books faster than the publisher thought it was practical to publish them and so he wanted to release all these other um, unpublished books he had sitting around and so he created this pen name so that he could still publish all of these other books without uh, saturating the market with Stephen King books. He was eventually found out and uh, as a result of that willingly dropped the persona after um, mounting evidence showed up um, linking Richard Barkman to Stephen King drawing parallels between the two. As for why Rage was taken out of print, this was the decision of Stephen King himself after a number of similar shooting incidents occurred uh, which were directly tied to the book Rage. If you go on the Wikipedia page for uh, Stephen King's Rage you will see a list of incidents and all of them uh, ex essentially directly mention that the perpetrator owned a copy of Rage or even outright admitted that Rage inspired them. The logic being that these people were a a already pretty screwed up, broken, traumatised people and uh, rage only made those feelings of anger and um, compulsions to violence feel validated and um, the book essentially glorified the act given how the class uh, eventually sided with Charlie Decker who was holding them hostage um, played along with him willingly. Uh, I should mention there is a scene in this book where a girl needs to go to the bathroom so he, Charlie Decker lets her go the entire time she's walking towards the door she's wondering if he's going to shoot her he doesn't, she goes to the bathroom and then to the utter shock of everyone in the classroom she comes back she doesn't take the opportunity to run away and leave the school, escape the situation uh, tell the authorities what's going on no, she comes back of her own free will that just tells you everything about how 
um, this, the students seem to side with Charlie over time, sympathise with him and put him on a pedestal. And so I suppose some of the perpetrators of these real incidents felt similarly, as I said, validated um, in, and vindicated in their feelings and compulsions to commit these incidents. And so after Steve King had enough of this, he decided to let the thing run out of print um, because he did not want to deal with that. He did not want uh, this book to inspire any more such incidents. Um, and there's a quote from him in which he essentially says, you wouldn't leave a can of gasoline in a place where a known firebug was likely to find it. So this is that sort of situation. Now onto a discussion of book censorship and what this particular case uh, has to contribute to that discussion. I do not believe in censorship of books. Stephen King himself has made a quote before uh, essentially saying, if you find out that a book is censored, you should get yourself to a library or a bookshop pronto and find out what it is that they don't want you to see. And I completely agree with that. There is a, an effect known as the Streisand effect, which basically shows how the act of trying to censor and hide something only serves to draw more attention to the thing you're trying to hide, increase awareness of it, and encourage people to find out what it is that is apparently so uh, controversial or bad or, you know, whatever it is that they don't want you to see whoever they might be. It feels like uh, a lot of the time, especially in America, we hear, I hear about um, book bannings in America, um, of all sorts of books from adult books to children's books even. There's even been a reprinting of Roald Dahl's books, some of Roald Dahl's books, rewriting certain parts of those books that are deemed problematic and, and you know, aged like milk. For example, the uh, racist depiction of the Oompa Loompas in um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, for example. And I don't agree with that. Fortunately, you can still buy them, I believe, under classic editions. Um, so at least they're not being completely, you know, swept under the rug. Um, but I don't agree with that. I think it is more powerful, more important and more productive to have a discussion about these books, this content. What it is that is so problematic or um, outdated about um, portrayals or instance within those books? why we don't do that anymore, how we learned to do better, how we can do better in the future, and how we can write about that sort of subject matter in a way that is respectful but also still accurate to history, instead of just trying to pretend that that problematic history is never happened. Because if we try to do that, then we are just doomed to repeat that history as we forget how bad and how much of a problem these things were back when they were still happening. However, regarding Stephen King's decision to take rage out of print, I 100% stand by his decision. Firstly, and perhaps most importantly, is that it was probably better for Stephen King himself. Even though he himself was not responsible for the incidents that this book inspired, it also cannot be denied that the book also did have a hand in inspiring those inst incidents, in making the culprits feel validated and justified in committing these atrocities. You can debate all you like about the impact that media uh, causes violence, about you know, violent video games making kids violent or whatever, but as I said earlier, that some of the culprits of these incidents directly stated that rage inspired them in some way. So that is incontrovertible evidence that this book had a hand in uh, the incidents that resulted. And uh, Stephen King, I can understand why he would not want to 
uh, have this thing out there anymore. He must have felt morally responsible for some of these incidents. I certainly would, um, if it were me. And he does not need that. That is not good for his mental health or for his, you know, feelings, his morals, his image, but mostly for his mental health and as a person. And that is really important. If something's not good for your mental health, if it's stressing you out and making you feel bad and guilty, like this must have done for him in quite a significant way, then it is better to do away with it. Uh, everyone else's opinion and that censorship comes second. Secondly, this is obviously better for people in general because since it inspired these sorts of incidents, it's better that it's not out there uh, being accessible by these people who are already broken, already in a bad place and do not need to see this and have that serve as a final push or as Stephen King himself put it, an accelerant. We do not need that. Society does not need that. And these people do not need that. They are still human. They need help. And this is the exact opposite of help. So this is a case, in my opinion, a rare case of book quote unquote censorship being completely justified because most importantly, it was the author's own decision to take this out of print. And secondly, because there is no denying that it has had a negative impact on society or specifically the people, the types of people who feel like Charlie Decker and relate to him and see themselves in him. As someone who is 100% against book censorship on, in principle, I am also 100% behind Stephen King's decision to take this book out of print. To say this book aged like milk is a, a very gross understatement and uh, as I said it really is the author's own decision. The author should have the right to decide what happens to their work including whether some of it should not be printed anymore. As I said earlier in the video Stephen King I believe wrote this as a teenager so I can understand why he may not have thought this through back then. Um, Publishing this as an adult, maybe he should have seen, thought a bit better of it. Um, but then again, he'd already written horror books, um, disturbing books already. So perhaps this didn't seem uh, that much of a step up from what he previously wrote and thus desensitised him to how iffy this could potentially be. So if that's the case, I don't really blame him for that. It's... Uh, it was a, a mistake for sure, but an understandable one um, and certainly not one that a publisher would make today, I am sure. As I said, uh, in Australia, we do not have to live in fear of these types of incidents happening to us. But I, even in this book, was still disturbing to me in, well, its nature, the incident, uh, the way the class ended up siding with Charlie Decker and putting him on a pedestal in the way they did as well as certain other you know if certainly less iffy by comparison but still iffy and gross things that were discussed in the book the whole thing aged like milk in more ways than one um besides the the main the obvious one is the main subject of this video if you have read rage yourself Please let me know what you think about it and how you feel about the quote unquote censorship, about Steve King taking it out of print. Do you agree with me that this is a rare case of justified book censorship? Or do you believe that the Streisand effect would have caused it to be spread around more? Um, certainly, it has increased its notoriety on Booktube and it made me want to. Uh, check it out and uh, again find out uh, what was so uh, shocking about it, how bad it was. Uh, I'd already knew basically what the synopsis was and why it was out of print but yeah I didn't know going in how bad it would be so let me know what you think in the comments if you read it. If you haven't read it but you're a Stephen King fan do you want to read it? Do you think it's worth checking out? 
Um, or do you think this is a better forgotten part of Stephen King's history? If you found this video meaningful or useful, please like and subscribe for more book reviews. This is probably going to be the uh, one of, the, one of if not the darkest thing I'll ever cover on this channel. It's certainly perhaps the most serious video I've made and probably one of the most serious videos I ever will make. Normally they're a lot more casual and lighthearted than this. And uh, with that said, as always, do lots of maths, read lots of books, and I'm sure you'll have a great day.